Imagine this, you've spent a lot of time creating a great WordPress website, but you wake up one morning and everything is gone. Your content, your ranking in Google, and your clients. So if you want to avoid this horror scenario and you want to get back online in a matter of minutes, make sure you watch this video until the end and share with friends and family that own a business because I'm going to show you exactly how to back up and restore your WordPress website for free. You're welcome. You thank me later. Hello, I'm Kay from the Astro team and I'm going to show you how to back up and restore your WordPress website. But first, why does it even matter? Well, simply because a website crash, no matter the reason, can become a total nightmare. Let me tell you a little story. A few years ago, a potential client contacts me because their website is in a mess. So they did not lose the website, but something else happened. So basically, this guy had several companies and he invested in a new sports brand. So he asked someone to build a website that was going on for a few months. And when that website was ready, the owner was so proud that he sent an email to all employees across all of the companies. Now, little did he know that the day he launched, the website was hacked. And let's just say that when the employees clicked on the link in the email and they opened the website, well, let's just say it was not really family friendly, if you catch my drift. So in this specific case, not only was it a nightmare because the website was not available, but it was also a nightmare because it had an impact on the company's image. And to make things worse, the owner had cut ties with the person who actually developed the website. So when the website was launched, there was no commercial contract between the two parties. Quite the contrary. So basically, he didn't know what to do when the website stayed like this for a few hours. Now, if that client had a backup of that website just before it was pushed in production, for example, I could have put it back in a matter of minutes. But as you may imagine, he had no backup at all. So first thing I did is I wiped out everything and then I gave him a quote to build a new website. So that ended up being super costly for the client because basically he paid for his website twice. But in terms of SEO, it didn't really impact it because it was a new website anyway. But for another client, it was a completely different story. That company was renting out rooms and studios for students. So basically they would get a lot of traffic from the end of the academic year up until the new year would start. Now the website was made as a one shot, so there was no maintenance contract. And what happened is the owner forgot to pay the bill for the domain and web hosting. And because the renewal was due to happen at a time where they had barely no traffic, like in the middle of the year, he didn't really pay attention. Now, just before the high season started, he decided to go take a look at the website because he wanted to see some of the pricing, make sure everything was accurate. And he realized his website was gone. And not only was the website gone, but also he lost all the SEO work that had been done on his website. Now, the owner is a great guy, but at the time he had an issue with delegating some of the tasks. And if he had delegated that to another department or to someone else, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But no matter the reason, the result was he had no website and he lost all of his SEO work which in case you don't know stands for search engine optimization. And so he lost a crucial source of traffic for his business. And as you may imagine, he didn't have any backup. So as you can see, having a backup and restore plan for your website is super crucial. It can literally save you tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. So the plan I'm going to give you today is completely free. But before we dive in, let's recap the various reasons why your website may crash. And first of all, as we just saw, forgetting to pay your web hosting and or domain. And I say and or because you might have the hosting and the web domain in the same spot, or you might have the domain somewhere, which is the name of your website, and the web hosting somewhere else where you're physically hosting the files of your website. So don't forget to pay for both and your best bet is to use a reminder app. Now, the next reason your website may crash is updates and conflicts. Could be conflicts between plugins, between plugins and the current version of WordPress. Could be also with themes. It really depends. So, for example, if we take a look here, we see that all three plugins here need to be updated. Now, WordPress now allows us to enable auto updates, which can be great for security. But on the other hand, if you enable auto updates for all plugins, then you increase the risk of compatibility issues. And it's hard to give just one rule that would be set in stone because on your website, you might have 10 plugins, 20, 30, 
and it really depends on a case-by-case -case basis. And finally, and we talked about it previously in the video, it can be due to security breaches. Now, there can be other reasons than the ones I just mentioned, but most of the time, these are the usual suspects. But later in this video, I will give you a few tips to minimize the risks. Next, backing up and restoring your WordPress website. And the first principle is that you should always back up your website before any major change. It is essential. Now, the second principle is that you should choose the right backup solution. And in the case of a WordPress website, the main solutions would be either with your web hosting provider or with a plugin. Now, you can do it manually, but let's keep things simple here. Now, there are way too many web hosting providers, so in this video, I will focus on using a free WordPress plugin. But if you're using a web hosting company like Hostinger, for example, they provide weekly backups and they provided a guide to make it super easy to backup and restore your websites. But like I said, in this video, we will be using a free plugin so that anybody can follow along. Now, the plugin we will be using is a free plugin called WP Vivid. Now, it does also come in a pro version in case you're interested by features like incremental backup cups, crash protection when you're migrating and migrating through cloud storage or creating push a staging site to live production. Just to give you a few examples. But like I said, in today's video, we're going to use the free plugin to backup and restore our websites. So let's imagine we've built the Cloudflix website and we want a backup and restore strategy. And we created this form on the Cloudflix website. And by the way, if you want to know how to create such a beautiful form, also with a free plugin called Shareforms, make sure you take a look at this video. But of course, once you're done watching this one. And now when people fill in the form, we do get notifications by email, but in case anything goes south, we have a backup of all the form entries right here in the plugin. So that's super valuable and we don't want to lose that. And of course, we don't want to lose our website either. So let's go to plugins, add new plugin. And then in the search field, you want to type WP Vivid, then click on install now and activate. Now, there are many options, but you don't need to know all of that. The tool is super simple. But one thing you have to bear in mind is that you can either save a backup as a local backup. So basically, it's going to create it first locally on your website in a dedicated folder that nobody else can access, except you, of course. And then you're going to download that archive. It's a zip file. And then you can reuse it wherever you want. That's a local backup. Now, the second option is a cloud storage backup. And for that, you want to go to the remote storage tab. And here, as you can see, you have Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, Amazon S3, DigitalOcean Spaces, and you can use FTP or SFTP. I believe you have more options in the pro plan, but that's plenty enough for what we need today. So in my case, I'm going to use a Google Drive account. It's completely free. So I'm going to click on Authenticate with Google Drive, select my account, and click on Continue. Now, you may be redirected to the login screen, and in that case, just log back in. Then just go back to WP Vivid Backup, Remote Storage, and once again, authenticate with Google Drive. Repeat the procedure and click Continue. And as you can see, authentication is done. Now, I guess this may be a bug. Sometimes it goes through the first time and sometimes you have to do it twice. But once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. Now, here you can enter a unique alias if you want to remember for which backup this is. Like maybe you have 10 websites, you want to remember for which backup it is. So I'm going to type Cloudflix and click on Add Now. And now, as you can see here, Google Drive has been added as a remote storage. So now we have more options to backup. Let's start with the first one. So click on Backup and Restore. And here you have several options, database and files, WordPress files, or only database. And most of the time, you're going to select the first option so you can leave it as default. This is the complete website, database and files. Next, you can save backups to local or send backup to remote storage. So let me show you. I'm going to click on backup now, but before I do so, look at this option. This backup can only be deleted manually because once you run out of space, the new backups are going to override the old backups. So let's say you have 50 old backups. If you take this option, this specific backup is going to be saved as long as possible. We're not going to do that now, but it's important you know the option exists. So click on backup now. And as you can see, you see the progress here. And there you go. It took about 10 to 15 seconds and here is our backup. 
Now you can download it, you can restore it. In our case, we want to download it. And so I'm just going to click on it. And one more time here, click on download. Now I've created a dedicated backup, so I'm just going to hit save. And now it's going to download the zip archive to my hard drive. And if you have a fast internet connection, it's only a matter of seconds. So that's the easiest way to create a backup. Let's say, for example, you're going to add a new plugin on the website and you want to backup before you do that. Well, that's the easiest way. But now in the day to day, it's also good to schedule your backup. So for that, you click on the schedule tab and you just select enable backup schedule. And here you can decide whether it's every 12 hours, daily, weekly, fortnightly or monthly. If you want custom, that's a pro feature. But once again, in the free version, there are plenty of options. Next, you select whether it's database and files or just the files or just the database. I'm just going to leave it as it is. And finally, you decide whether you want to save backups on the local host, which is your web hosting, or send backups to remote storage. Now, I found this safer because if you lose your web hosting, for example, like in the example I gave earlier, where the website owner forgot to pay the bill for the domain and hosting. So in that case, you would lose also the backup. So it doesn't really make sense. So here I chose the option to send backups to remote storage. I only have one. So it's the Google Drive remote storage. And next, I'm going to click on save changes. And as you saw, the backups were set to daily, but since I'm shooting the video now, I'm just going to show you how it looks when it actually arrives in your Google Drive. So by default, it created a folder called WPVV underscore backup on my Google Drive. And this is what the file looks like. So basically just a zip file in your Google Drive storage. And you can simply download it like you would download any file on Google Drive. So right click and hit download. Now, another great feature that you get even with the free version of WP Vivid is a feature called auto migration. So for that, I created a completely new website called website B, which is where I actually want to restore the Cloudflix website. And by creating adjustment, I generated literally took like 10 seconds. Next, I installed WP Vivid exactly the same way I showed you earlier in the video. And then I clicked on the key tab here. Next, I clicked on generate. It's going to generate a key. And then all you need to do is copy this key. Next, I went back to the Cloudflix website, then clicked on auto migration. And right here, I pasted the key that I just copied. Next, I chose the content I wanted to transfer, in that case, database and files. Then I clicked on clone then transfer. And if I go back to website B, let me go to dashboard, WP Vivid backup. And as you can see, we see our received backup. So now I can just click on restore and restore one more time. It's asking me, are you sure you want to continue? Because it's going to wipe out everything on website B. But as we saw, website B is an empty shell. It was just generated in a few seconds. There is no content. So I'm going to click on OK. And here we can see the overall progress. All right, in a few seconds or minutes later, depending on the size of your website, we get this prompt, restore completed successfully. So let me click OK. And it's automatically redirecting me to this login screen. But as you can see, it is now the Cloudflix website. And if you want to be sure, let's go back to the front end. And now I'm going to refresh. And there you go. The Cloudflix website has been restored. And if I log back in the back end and go to Sure Form Entries, as you can see, all our entries are there and restored. Now, restoring from a local backup or a backup store in the cloud that you downloaded on your computer is almost the same. So let me show you. Here, I'm on a new website called website C. Yeah, very original, I know. Now, let me go to the dashboard. And as you can see here, I've already installed WP Vivid, same way I showed you earlier in this video. So let me click on backup and restore. Next, I'm going to click on the upload tab. And where you see drop files here, you can either drag and drop the zip file or click on select files. And if you do so, it would open a prompt. Then you're going to locate the file you previously saved on your computer. Then click on open. Next, click on upload. And you can see the percentage going up here. And there you go, the upload has completed. Click on OK. And next, click on restore. And restore one more time. And just like previously, it's going to ask you if you want to continue. I'm going to click on OK. And next, click on OK once it's restored. And now if we go to the front end and refresh, there you go. Our website has been restored. Next, essential tips to prevent future website crashes. And the first tip is your update strategy. So if you go to dashboard updates 
As you can see here, it starts with WordPress core updates, then plugins, then themes. And you should respect that order. Always start with WordPress core, then plugins, then themes. It was laid out this way for a reason. Next, timing. So let's go to plugins, install plugins. And as you can see here, I only have three plugins. So even if I enable auto updates and something goes wrong, it should be pretty easy to troubleshoot it. Now with website with a lot of plugins, that may be a bit more difficult because as mentioned before, if you enable auto updates, it may increase the risk of compatibility issues. Now, ideally you would check your website every day and update each component one by one and check your website after updating each component. But we all know that doesn't always happen this way. Now, there are tools that can automate all of this, but at the very least, if you don't wanna use some of these tools, in this day and age, you should do a maintenance on your website. And by maintenance, I mean updating the core, the plugins and the themes at least once per month. And if you combine that with the backup and restore strategy, if anything goes wrong, you still have your latest backup, which if you follow the video, you should have a daily backup on your free Google Drive storage. And for me, usually when I have a compatibility issue, usually what I do is I deactivate plugins one by one. Now, sometimes it's not doable because you really don't have access to your website. And if that's the case, you need to access your website through your web host, open the files, then locate the plugins folder. And then what I usually do is I create a temporary folder. And then from that main plugins folder, you're just going to remove each plugin folder one by one until you find the culprit. And once you've identified the culprit, you can update all of your other plugins and then pray that the culprit plugin comes with an update, which usually happens fast if the plugin is actively maintained. And that's why it's important to choose which plugins you install on your website. Next tip, use strong passwords and keep your website secure. Now we'll talk about security in a moment, but using a strong password is really the beginning of security. Because as we saw, if you get hacked, it's not really fun and it can have financial consequences. Now, when it comes to security, there are services and plugins that do just that. And sure, you can find some free tools, but personally, I tend to trust companies that actually make revenue. So I'm sure they're going to maintain the plugin. That means they're making revenue and they can actually ensure the quality of service. So there are many options out there like Mallcare, Blog Vault, and Securi. And they come with features such as website firewall, monitoring and detection, incident response, performance boost, website backups, and more. So as you can see, using a simple strategy and a free plugin like WP Vivid can literally save you tens of thousands of dollars, if not more. But whether you use a plugin or your web hosting backup feature, one thing is for sure. You cannot afford to not have a backup and restore strategy. Now, let me know in the comments if you ever lost a website. And I'll see you in the next one. And cut. Got bigger.